Let's assume you are a broker on Fiverr. Other than screening and filtering freelancers, pricing your offer to the freelancer is always a complicated issue, especially when you are new to the system. To set a price of your job offer from the earnings on Fiverr would be a big question mark for some. There is no 100% guarantee that you'll get a perfect freelancer all the time, so dealing with a difficult freelancer is unavoidable sometimes. As you may already know, negotiating with difficult freelancers is not an easy task and requires certain techniques. You need to think in terms of how a freelancer would think when you're setting up the prices for them, such as factors that will affect whether they will take up the offer or not. The cost plus factor comes first. When you can offer a price that is worth more than what they will need to do, it makes an irresistible offer to grab. The market price is the next factor. You must not offer a price that is too different from the market price. You may not know how to start researching on the market price if you have just begun. Here's what you can do. Visit all the other marketplaces, search for keywords, and mark down the prices offered by the other sellers. For instance, if you're looking for a graphic designer to draw a logo for you, look for the keyword logo design in the marketplace. From here, you can see how much people usually offer to the freelancers. Moving on, the third factor is value-driven. This is once again a factor that is related to the first factor, the cost plus factor. Regardless whether you are a buyer or seller, people always look for the value. What's in it for me is the first question that will pop up in our minds. As a seller, you must be able to show them the value. Cost plus factor plays a vital role in the brokering system. When a gig is not profitable, freelancers are more than likely to turn down the offer. They accept gigs based on the offers that can earn more than what they will need to do. This includes the time that will be needed to invest, and whether the time they invest to work on your job is worth the price or not. If they could have worked for another gig with the same amount of time but with a higher pay, they will definitely go for the second offer. To calculate the cost plus for a gig is relatively easy. All you will need is the unit cost and the desired profit margin. For instance, if the wages for a workday is $15, to finish the whole project will need at least one week. Hence, the unit cost will be 30 times 7, which equals to $105. So, if the gig doesn't offer more than $105, freelancers are more likely to put your gig offer as their last option. Leveraging market rates is solely based on the marketplaces in which you are offering your gig, where you look at the marketplaces and the prices of other gigs to identify what costs others are offering and make decisions based on that. You can do some research on the other gig prices offered by other sellers in the marketplace, especially about the gigs in the same field. Once you have the information needed, set a price that does not run too far away from the margin. It can be slightly higher or lower than the others. Try to find a balance between that which can satisfy both your financial budget and the cost plus of the freelancers. It is not an easy task to set the price to be win-win all the time, but always remember to refer to the market price. The market prices in comparison to international freelancers may vary. That said, if you're using international marketplaces, you will need to understand the local and international market. Last but not least, freelancers are value-driven. Like I've said, this is a factor that goes together with the cost plus factor. People will always look for a gig that can profit them. Even if they have decided to take up the offer that does not profit them, they will work equivalent to the price you've offered. That said, the lower the price, the lower the quality of work they will deliver to you. Thus, always ask for further information from freelancers. For instance, a standard voiceover costs $100. But if you want it to be synced with a video, it'll be another $50. You can ask the freelancers to send you a custom offer with all the gigs listed out with prices, like how Fiverr is doing now. This way, you will know what you've paid for, as well as collect references for future use. Be prepared to negotiate with freelancers. They may be difficult sometimes, but you as a seller must stand firm on your point of view as well. If the price they ask for is not favorable as well as unprofitable, do not be afraid to turn down the offer from the freelancer. The price structures can work three ways, which are calculated by hourly rates, daily, monthly rates, and project-based rates. Hourly rates and daily or monthly rates are usually for sellers who like to hire for long term. 
If you are not keen on running around looking for freelancers every single time you receive orders from your clients, you can look for someone who is willing to work long term. There are, of course, also cons if you're hiring them for long term. You will never get to know the person that works from you. That being said, you will not know what happens if he or she is missing in action. In case of emergency, you wouldn't know how to contact them other than through emails. The ideal price structure will be project-based, which you'll pay them once per project. This way, you do not need to worry about the issue of commitment. You can always go back to the same freelancers if you find the job they completed has achieved most of the positive feedback from your clients. Here are some tips for you when you're drafting the price of your gig for freelancers. First of all, you need to know the minimum acceptable rate of the freelancers and not offer a gig lower than that. And then, as a broker on Fiverr, you should pay your freelancers from the earnings you receive from the client. Calculate your own profits in between after you pay the freelancer. If the return on investment is low, discard the request. When the ROI is low or even negative, it's said that the job isn't profitable.